Hi there, my name is Lauren Isford. I'm the head of CellServe product at Airtable, and I'm joining you today to speak about growth-minded product management, or as I've stated it here, helping a business grow from one to 100 million users. As I mentioned, I work at Airtable and I'm the head of self-serve product. So what this means is that I'm responsible for the product experience and user journey for any individual or team who comes to Airtable and signs up on their own without the assist of our sales team. If you're not familiar with Airtable, we're a low code database platform that drives team collaboration and helps teams create amazing applications and workflows. We recently raised our series E, and though I won't be able to cover all of the amazing things I've learned about Airtable today, you can check us out at Airtable.com. To tell you a little bit more about my background and how I arrived at growth-led product management, this really began for me when I was an undergrad at Stanford. I was part of the Mayfield Fellows program there, where I learned what it meant to be a growth marketer or to even growth hack in the industry. And I saw what data-driven observations could do for driving growth for a business. After I graduated, I went to Dropbox where I worked as an analyst on the growth team. And I was exposed to a growth team firsthand for the first time. I specifically focused on understanding the opportunities to improve trial conversion for Dropbox for Business and Dropbox for Teams. Then I worked at Blue Bottle Coffee on the e-commerce business. And there my role in growth was slightly different. I worked on our paid marketing, SEO and SEM campaigns, in addition to doing some analytics on how we could convert our subscriptions. Over the past four years, I led a set of growth teams at Facebook, including the teams that support internet.org, the new user experience and engagement on the Facebook app, and India Growth. And just last month, I joined Airtable in my new role. Many of the philosophies that I'm applying to onboarding to my new role today on how to build a great growth team I've shared in this presentation. So I hope you find them valuable too. My goal today is to share clear guidance for how you can leverage product-led growth or PLG to deliver outsized impact in your organization. Now you might be thinking this talk feels best tailored to a growth product manager or someone who identifies as that or a growth engineer or even someone who's a growth marketer. That is not the case. As you will learn in our time together today, I really feel that every product team achieves more with product-led growth and the growth mindset. So that's where we'll begin with the growth mindset. After that, we'll talk about how I believe the fastest moving growth teams are very detail-oriented, which might sound a little counterintuitive. And finally, I'll give you some tips and guidance on building a growth team or even a growth-minded team in your product organization. Let's start with the growth mindset. So to level set, you might be wondering what exactly a growth team is. That is a very good question. It can mean very different things in different places. I'll give you my definition so you know what I'm referring to. For this exercise, let's think about the mission of a product organization, including its cross-functional and partner teams, to be delivering as much value as possible to the users of a given product. The core product development team, which is sometimes just called the product team, focuses on creating value for the users of that product. Much further down, the marketing team is responsible for communicating the value of that product. This includes driving awareness and generating leads of customers who could be a potential fit. Now you're probably wondering what sits in between those two teams. That's where our growth team is. The goal of our growth team is to deliver as much value as possible to users. This team takes the created value of the core product team and then works hard to ensure every single user with intent to use the product is able to unlock and extract maximum value out of that product experience. You've probably heard about many different things that growth teams specifically work on in achieving that goal. Onboarding, acquisition, churn prevention, paid marketing, email marketing, notifications. Many of these are worked on by many growth teams, at least a subset of them. But in my view, not all growth teams are quite the same. So I'll share with you what I think growth teams should work on, though you may hear many of these things as you move throughout the tech industry. 
Historically, over the past 10 years, growth teams have really been growth as marketing teams. What I mean by this is that people who worked on growth teams were growth marketers. They were data-driven and continue to be data-driven, generally sit within the marketing org and identify as a marketing team, and really emphasize and have a focus on acquisition. Something like SEO, SEM, and paid marketing would commonly be found on this team. A-B testing is very common on a growth marketing team, but building products with a full stack engineering team is not. Now, what's increasingly happening in the growth tech industry is the emergence of a new type of team, which is growth as product, which if I had to bet, I would guess is going to be pervasive in the next three to five years. Growth as product means the team is still very data-driven. In fact, you might find many product managers who are fluent in SQL, but it's also fully staffed with a proper engineering team and cross-functional partners. It would be much more common to have a full-time PM, a dedicated designer, five engineers, a researcher, and other functions supporting a team within that growth team. And there will typically be one product team per life cycle stage. We'll get into what exactly I mean by life cycle stage, but this means there's probably a couple product teams with a couple PMs who are working on a product that specifically supports the life cycle of the user and what the user is navigating in their journey with the product. This is called product-led growth. For extreme clarity, I'll define PLG for you guys here. PLG is the approach to growth, which leverages the product itself to maximize value to its users. This means a couple things. It means that the focus of that growth team is on users who demonstrate intent. Bringing users to the product and driving awareness is much less common because the surface that is used is the product itself. It also means that that team is building features and changing product functionality in service of its goal. So for example, to help users retain better or to help users upgrade. And there's almost always a sibling or partner team to that growth team, which is in core product development. It's becoming more common today to have product teams that identify as a core product team that sit in parallel to a growth product team, but it's not pervasive yet. And it, might, it may become that way. So I think the key point here is to remember that there is that sibling or partner team, that this growth team is really focusing on driving value after it has been created, and that this team is a full stack product team that will build features, will test and change things, and will use the product itself to drive more value. If you've ever had a puppy, I personally am a new puppy mom or a child, or even you know, some, some nice array of plants or succulents at home, you're probably familiar with how important it is to make an ongoing investment in something that you parent to ensure it continues to be successful as it progresses through different years, seasons, and phases of life. I wanted to use this metaphor to emphasize that product-led growth is similar. Growth is not a one-time investment or a one-year project that you can complete and finish and walk away from. As a product evolves and grows, the requirements for best practices and the care that product needs from its growth team evolves alongside it. The notifications or emails that worked last year almost certainly won't continue to work as well today. And the users who experience your product will change and require different types of support as they onboard and orient to your product. A growth team is a permanent and evergreen team, just as product or marketing is also permanent and evergreen. Let's talk about an example of PLG on a team that I was on. As I mentioned earlier, I spent four years supporting internet.org, which is part of the Facebook connectivity initiative. Facebook's growth teams, I can say from experience, are world-class. Facebook as a company is the originator and propagator of many of the great product-led growth concepts and approaches that you see at startups across the tech industry today. One of the products that Facebook connectivity and internet.org offer is called Free Basics, and it provides free access to an internet browser in emerging markets. Back in 2015, Facebook shared in its newsroom on a blog post that one year after Free Basics initially launched, it had already grown to be in 17 countries and was delivering 50% faster internet adoption in those markets than before it launched. 
I'm sharing this example with you because I know firsthand that the approach of creating a value, valuable product is just the first step. Ensuring every single user can adopt, activate on, and engage deeply with that product is equally important. And what I just shared with you about the scale and success of Free Basics just one year after launch is evidence of that pursuit of ensuring that a product is frictionless for everyone. Another more recent example of the growth mindset in action is the recent timer feature you see on the right, which was launched by Figma as part of FigJam. If you're familiar with FigJam, it's Figma's brainstorming and ideation tool. Figma identified many important adjacent use cases on top of that brainstorming and ideation, including stand-ups, synthesis, retros, offsites, and then they implemented this timer feature to unlock more activation from users who needed it and also deepen engagement on those adjacent use cases that they identified after they launched FigJam for the first time. This is another great example of using the growth mindset to go above and beyond and deliver what users needed to have a deeply engaging experience. One last example for you is Peloton. I know this isn't a tech company in the traditional sense, but Peloton is an excellent example of a company that embodies the product-led growth mindset. Peloton has a large list of classes that they offer on their app and on their bike, but they identified that getting someone to try Peloton isn't enough. They have to love it. So Peloton has invested in building out different cohorts of class types and deepening their inventory to support the user who likes a recovery ride or a hard rock ride or a boot camp ride. And they've layered in other categories of athletic offering. Investing in those specific user niches is an intentional use of the growth mindset to give user cohorts what they're looking for and drive that user from being an adopter and maybe a user of Peloton to an advocate. All right, section two, moving fast and slow. You might remember from earlier in this presentation that I mentioned that we'll discuss how in my experience, the absolute best growth teams who move the fastest and deliver the most impactful changes to their product are very detail oriented. Let's start with this concept at a very high level. A product isn't good if nobody uses it. The long line of customers or your equivalent to that, your advocates, your champions is really that sign that people love consuming and using your product. So what makes a product so lovable? Well, my perspective on this is that the creators of the product and its experience must have attention to detail. And that is paramount to success. John Wooden is a sports coach who said this very well. What he meant is if you consistently excel at the little details, they will sum to create a big outcome. This is the mindset that unlocks the flywheel of impact on a growth team. Once a product is created and launched, optimizing it in a sophisticated and intentional way will squeeze the extra juice out of that lemon to make your perfect lemonade. I know this from my own experience when I worked at Blue Bottle Coffee. At the time, our e-commerce team was focused on delivering an excellent experience for purchasers of coffee beans on our website, which included a coffee bean delivery subscription. We spent months trying to figure out what our targeting and user personas were for who we thought would really want this product. And it wasn't quite working as we intended. We ultimately ended up launching what we called the coffee quiz, which asked users specifically tailored questions about their preferences and then recommended the right coffee. It turns out that this lever of personalization has repeatedly been a great unlock across the industry in converting products by supporting a user with the attention to detail and the nuances of their preference that they really need, that improves conversion. It helps that user know what they're signing up for and it makes a huge difference in the experience for them. When you start thinking about how to approach product-led growth on your own team, I'd encourage you to start by defining the user lifecycle or the user funnel. This can look very different for different products, but I've included the rough steps that I think are exemplary here acquire, activate, or get to that aha moment, retain, and convert. 
And these can mean different things in different products. Conversion could be something like paying for a product for the first time. Importantly, as you approach that life cycle, lead with data. Understand the exact percentage drop-off between each step in that life cycle. Diagnose where there are the biggest gaps, quantify the opportunity to invest more in each of those areas, and double down on building features and products that help users navigate that life cycle within your product. Leading with data is critical and having that detail orientation to understanding every number beneath that life cycle will enable you to unlock and uncover where you can serve users better. HipCamp is an example of a company that's done this really well. One of the most important unlocks to activating or onboarding a HipCamp user is finding a campsite that fits their interests and fits what they're looking for. Recently, HipCamp launched in Australia a partnership with UCamp. They just posted about it. This unlocked 50,000 new campsites in a geography where there was demand for their service. In understanding and diagnosing the user life cycle, they were able to unlock a specific area where they could focus on growing their investment to therefore grow the business. Finally, at Airtable, we're thinking about this too. Right when I joined Airtable, my own team released an in-product help center. You can read about it in the latest What's New update on the Airtable blog from June. We already had a help center, but this in-product help center is specifically designed to support a user in context when they're in their very first product experience. Identifying a specific user need in a specific context that addresses something in the user lifecycle, like onboarding for the first time, makes it much easier to deliver all of the value the user is looking for when they come experience your product. All right, the last step in our journey is building a growth team or a growth-minded team. I have the user life cycle that I showed you earlier up here again. I know that many companies aren't quite in a place to build out an entire team to drive growth and product. So small steps, baby steps sometimes are in order. But that doesn't mean that doing the exercise of what could this look like isn't important and valuable and clarifying. So I'd encourage you to do the exercise even in your own time, just so that you can think about it. If you take a rough look at this life cycle, I would recommend roughly creating four product teams where one product team supports each step in this life cycle, an acquisition team, an onboarding team, a churn or retention team, and then an upgrades team or a conversion team, depending on exactly what conversion looks like for your product. An excellent growth team has a few key qualities. One is that that team should always have and be working towards a clear, quantified and measurable goal. That might be revenue, it might be number of users, it might be something else, but it should be clear, evergreen and North Star in quality. And the team should be using A-B testing to try out new features and changes that will help them measure impact towards that goal. Second, the team should have a portfolio-based approach to product, to product development and product management. This means pairing small bets, which are quick wins and small changes that make minor but still meaningful improvements to the user experience and might seem more like the optimizations you're familiar with from hearing about growth teams or experiencing them in the past, with bigger bets that could be multi-half or quarter or year milestone-based product investments that are meant to meaningfully improve how a user progresses through that life cycle. And finally, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but that team should be a partner team to a core product development team that is focused on creating value by building new features. I'll leave you with one final example on this from my own experience. In its early days, Dropbox had a growth and revenue team which was focused on driving the self-serve business, much like what I'm doing at Airtable today. This dedicated team implemented the Space Race, which was a renowned and applauded growth effort where users could invite and onboard their friends to Dropbox to receive more free space. This was made possible because Dropbox had a dedicated growth team that literally mapped the life cycle of learning to use Dropbox, inviting others, onboarding, and sharing to a product like the Space Race itself. 
This is a great example of what you can do when you have dedicated growth practitioners across functions, thinking about how to help users progress through that journey and through that life cycle. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you all have enjoyed this talk. For one final plug, I've really enjoyed my first two months at Airtable, and I hope you all would consider checking out our careers page. Now, as you all embark on your own journeys at your own companies, even if not at Airtable, I hope you think about how you can apply what I discussed today to your own teams, or you go through some exercises to think about what a team like this could look like. And after you do that, I think you'll notice that there are some opportunities that you might be able to address that you haven't yet today. And I really look forward to hearing about what those are. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this talk.